I was using a crow tent as my mobile darkroom for quite a while right now and I really liked the setup. But the only thing was, it always took some time to set it up and it was mostly easier to do it with uh, some help. And after I used the Eskimo Quickfish 3 at the Camera Obscura festival, I liked it even more because of the quick setup and the space inside. This space inside really is great for a workshop and demonstrations. You can just invite people into the darkroom and show them everything. So I bought myself a refurbished one. I was very excited to unpack it and nearly trashed my camera during that. <laughs> Before I set it up for the first time I took some pictures, uh, I posted them also on my blog, to remember how I have to fold it. During unpacking I found uh, the tent packs and also the description how to set it up. So now the video could be over because others explained already how to modify the tent to make it light tight. But I thought there must be a better more durable option to modify the tent. For that I visited a local paint store. By the way I will link everything I use in the description so you can buy it in a local store or use the affiliate links. In the shop I learned that I could use this peelable paint. I tested it on a fabric that is uh, similar to the tent and it worked pretty well. I did squish this test piece every day for several weeks and it still looks great. But the shop assistant also told me to use a screen printing ink. This ink is also used to paint truck tarpaulin. So after I heard that I was really impressed and I thought I have to get something like that. He hasn't had the uh, ink in his shop so I tried to, to find it in another one. I wasn't able to find it locally so I called the shop in Germany and asked for one that is suitable for my tent. The owner was super nice and explained to me what paint I should use and that I need an additional cold fix for the paint so it cures under normal temperature. Before I started to paint my tent I mixed the screen paint with the cold fixer. For that I was wearing gloves and goggles to be safe. I put some of the paint in the cup and put it on my scale. After that I added about 2% of the cold fix into the cup and mixed it very well for a long time. Now I went back to the tent and painted over every space that had tiny holes in it. I also painted all the seams. <laughs> It was super hot in the tent and I was sweating like crazy. <laughs> and my conclusion after a month is that it is really great and it's very flexible. Now my last challenge was to fix the zipper. A lot of people hang black fabric over it or block the light with a black reflector. I wanted to do an easier permanent solution. So I built a cover for the zipper like you have it on your jeans. So I called the company Henkel and asked them what glue would be the best solution for my problem. They forwarded my question to a technician who called me back and suggested to use the classic uh, Patex power glue and he also suggested to hammer it down. So let me show you what he meant with that. After I got a stiff and very light tight fabric, I traced the shape of the zipper, cut it out, put the glue on the tent and on the fabric uh, after that both needed to, to dry for about 15 minutes. And now I press them together and uh, after pressing it together there comes the fun part. The stronger the bond between these two fabrics should be, the stronger you must press it together. So I used a wooden board and a hammer to make a strong connection. Just be careful to not get any glue on the zipper and don't hammer on the zipper so you will damage it. One more thing I had to do is to create windows for it. So these are the original ones. And here I put Velcro and red gelatin filters. These are the same filters as I used in this video. I will link below. This is the television video. For very bright locations I put another Velcro on the red gelatin filters so I can stack them together. And if I want to totally black all light out, I built black windows with pond liner, also with velcro on it. Now I'm gonna show you the finished tent with all the parts I use. For the floor I use a big piece of pond liner. That is great for blocking out the light and also as backup insurance if you spill some chemicals on the ground. And it also avoids too much humidity in the tent that could come from the ground.
Here you can already see how my zipper cover looks like. There is no need anymore to use a black reflector or a hanging cloth over it. It is always there and will never bother you during a shooting and you easily can ventilate both doors. This is the small camping table I use for my water canister. So this is my main table I work with. Now I put in my red light and a power bank. More why I use exactly these uh, items I'll tell you a little bit later. This is my water canister with a tap and the red shells I showed you before. So for the camera goggles normally I use explorer cases for safety transport. For that I have a bigger one and smaller ones depending uh, of the different assignments. But if I travel close distances with small amounts of chemicals, I use the traveling tanks, uh, I refute them here, and a Coleman Extreme Cooler. This is a very rugged box, yet you can even sit on it like on a stool and it can take up to 110 kilograms. Pretty cool thing. Let's start with the table and let me explain why I like this one a lot. It is very rugged, stable and adjustable in height. It can handle up to 60 kilograms and folds to a pretty small form factor. I have a second one that does not fold that much but can handle 120 kilograms. I know it's not important for us to have tables that can handle that much weight, but it is important for us to have stable tables and these tables from Lifetime are really great. I bought everything my by myself, nothing is sponsored, I just share what I think works great for me. This small table is just for the canister so I can put the trays for washing underneath. You can see now it's pitch black inside when I close the zipper, pretty cool. And now I mount the red gel windows so you guys can see how well they work. So why do I recommend this power bank? First of all it lasts for a very long time, second it can charge your phone or your airports wirelessly and third you can charge the power bank with USB-C, micro USB or a lightning cable so you don't need any adapter with you, just your phone or laptop charger. I think that's pretty cool. I like to use these red light strips because they can be controlled with a remote and with your phone. So why is this important? Because I lose these remote controls pretty often or forget them at home. If that happens, I can still use my phone to change the color. To mount the light strip on the tent, I use these little clips to avoid any scratches on the fabric of the tent. You know, if I would try to mount it between the rods and the tent, I for sure would scratch the tent. So I think the solution with the clips is much better. And now I can show you how well the covers for the zippers are working. You know, with that in place, you can easily open both doors and ventilate the tent without dealing with any reflectors or hanging cloth all the time. You just open it and close it and you're done. All this testing with color and uh, gluing the covers and all that stuff took me a really long time. So I hope I could make your life easier with this tutorial. As said, I put links to everything down in the description. You can also find the links to support me so I can make more videos like that. If you found this tutorial helpful, you know what buttons you can use uh, down there. Subscribe and hit the bell icon to see more of my videos. And as always, I'll be back guys. <laughs>